Hello everyone, myself Dr. Samir. Today I am going to say about the dye laser that is used during dialysis. In the previous video of the hemodialysis machine, I told you that the blood comes from the patient into the dialyzer where it gets purified and this goes back into the patient. So we will study what the dialyzer is actually. So dialyzer is basically uh, an instrument that has many hollow fibers inside it through which the blood passes. Now the hollow fibers are generally have they have an internal diameter of around 180 to 200 microns and they have a wall thickness of around 30 to 40 microns. So these are the various fibers, hollow fibers. Here is a 2D view. Actually these are uh, 3D arrangement like you can see from the outside multiple fibers this kind are arranged so that it forms a cylindrical device okay multiple fibers and there are spaces in between these spaces to which the dialyzer flows i will tell about that so basically a dialyzer has this hollow fibers and there are four ports so the four ports this is port one port two port three and port four so this is the port for entry of blood from the patient into the dialyzer which passes through the several pores actually and then they come out through the second port okay so this is again to the patient port 3 and port 4 is the dialysate inflow here we can see the dialysate inflow and here the dialysis outflow now this dialysate passes in between the fibers okay so this is your port 3 and this is your port 4 one for inlet of dialysis one for the outgoing of the dialysis fluid now what happens the blood flows from this direction and for the dialysis to take place or the exchange to take place that the purification of the blood the dialysis needs to flow in the opposite direction so blood in this direction and dialysis in this direction you can see the blood is flowing in this direction and the dialysis fluid is flowing in this direction so this is where the exchange of particles or your toxic materials like urea, creatine and all take place. I will tell that. Okay. So this is the counter current mechanism. So basically the process by which the purification of the blood or the um, waste materials that is removed from our body that takes place by two methods generally. One is your diffusion that is along the concentration gradient. Second is your convection. Okay. So here we see again blood in this direction and dialysis flow in this direction. So we can see these particles, the small particles are generally the smaller particles like urea and they all go from the blood to the dialysis flow due to the concentration gradient by the process of diffusion, okay, concentration gradient. The other method is called the convection. Generally the large molecules are removed from the blood into the dialysis by convection here actually it is takes place because of the hydraulic pressure gradient so the solvent or the fluid that moves from the blood compartment to the dialysis along with it they take some solute because of the pressure gradient that is called the solute drag okay so this is, is what the uh, mechanism of convection so these are the two methods diffusion and convection so here we can see the larger molecules that depends on the pore size actually the larger molecules they can come mostly they come by convection the rate of diffusion of these molecules they decrease logarithmically as the solute si solute size increases so as the solute size increases from this to this okay so the rate of diffusion it decreases in a logarithmic scale now coming to the composition of the fibers the fibers that i have told you that can be divided into non synthetic or synthetic now again non synthetic is your modified or unmodified how that it uh, dif uh, differs modified unmodified means is your cellulose uh, that is non synthetic cellulose fibers and modified means the hydroxyl group of the cellulose is removed and added by any other compound so that is your non synthetic now synthetic is generally com com uh, comprises of your polysulfane polyether sulfone polysulfone pan derived that is polyacryl or nitrile so these are the various materials used to make our fibers or the membranes 
the dilaser membranes okay non synthetic and synthetic non synthetic is unmodified and modified unmodified is cellulose modified is the hydroxyl group of cellulose is removed by any other replaced by any other molecule and synthetic polysulfone polyether sulfone or polyacryl or nitrile derived and the permeability of these membranes that depends on two factors the thickness of the pores uh, sorry the thickness of the membrane and the pore size in the beginning i had told you the hollow fibers the internal diameter is 180 to 200 micron and wall thickness was 30 to 40 micron so the thickness of the membrane wall and the pore size present in the membranes they uh, dictate the permeability of the your dialyzer okay now the dialyzer how much permeable it is or uh, how good a dialyzer is that uh, can be classified that is generally classified based on your beta 2 microglobulin clearance so beta 2 microglobulin is generally a surrogate marker to know the quality of the dialyzer okay so the beta 2 microglobulin here we can see because based on the clearance of the beta 2 microglobulin they have a classification called low flux then high flux then your protein leaking so classification japanese that is internal classification japanese classification is 1 2 3 4 5 depending on the beta 2 microglobulin clearance low flux is your beta 2 microglobulin clearance less than 10 ml per minute high flux is 10 to 50 then protein leaking is your 50 to 70 milliliter per minute of beta 2 microglobulin clearance here we see the urea nitrogen clearance that also is low flux it is 125 ml per minute and in high flux to protein leaking it is more to more than 150 and ultra filtrate rate ultra filtration rate is generally less than 15 in low flux greater than 15 or 15 to 15 in high flux and greater than 15 protein leaking membranes okay so dialyzer can be classified into low flux high flux and protein leaking okay so this is different and this is generally taken into consideration when the qb by qd that is the blood flow by the dialysis flow is generally 300 by 500 so what is this is that the blood flow is 300 ml per minute and the dialysis flow in the counter current direction is 500 ml per minute when these parameters are maintained this is the rate of clearance that takes place beta 2 microglobin clearance urine nitrogen clearance and ultra filtration rate so if you come down on the qb blood flow so basically def definitely these values will come down a little more okay now high efficiency dialyzer as i told you is the high flux okay that generally how is it uh, why is it called a high efficacy because it has larger surface area larger pores more surface area so higher uh, membrane for your diffusion diffusion and convection larger pores so more amount of convection more amount of diffusion okay so it depends on uh, so with these two parts that uh, these two things larger surface and large, larger pores make a dialyzer high efficacy okay kuf kuf is your ultra filtration coefficient so basically it is the measurement of water permeability in milliliter per hour per millimeters of mercury now water permeability across the dialyzer so the volume of fluid that is transferred across the membrane per millimeter of mercury of pressure gradient across the membrane is your ultra filtration coefficient so this ultra filtration coefficient varies from dialyzer to dialyzer and this depends on the and it is for each molecule it is different for creatinine urea vitamin b12 or your phosphate so the ultra filtration coefficient for each molecule varies from dialyzer to dialyzer okay so based on this actually the selection of dialyzer is made nowadays the thing is that the we can control the ultra filtration volume and rate in the dialysis machine so this is basically now not taken into account as we set the ultra filtration volume and rate as per our need so the tmp may raise the transmembrane potential may raise depending on the kuf but now we are not selecting the kuf but we are selecting the ultra filtration volume and the so basically the membrane material area priming volume length diameter of the membrane the pore size sterilization technique these all uh, say how the good our dialyzer is okay so in the uh, these various parameters they decide how good a 
dialyzer can be now coming to the sterilization of the dialyzer so we have to choose the dialyzer based on the as i told membrane material area priming volume length surface area now coming to the chemical sterilization heat sterilization and radiation sterilization these are the three types of sterilization process that is used to sterilize the dialyzer generally the dialyzer are reused so these are the methods of sterilization chemical is generally done by our ethylene oxide eto and heat direct heat and radiation can be again gamma radiation or beta radiation so there are different advantages and disadvantages uh, with each of kind of sterilization uh, even mediated reactions or immediate uh, reactions so but these are the three methods for sterilization so sterilization is a chemical that is by eto heat and radiation now radiation can be gamma radiation or your beta radiation okay the uh, dialyzer it has hollow fibers it has four ports blood and dialyzed flow across in the different direction in counter current mechanism the exchange of molecules takes place by diffusion or by convection that depends on the pore size smaller molecules they get exchanged by diffusion like urea and uh, beta 2 microglobin is a medium size molecule and larger molecules like albumin are also present but they generally don't cross sometimes they cross in the larger pores in the high flux dialysis or protein leaking dialysis there are chances for albumin loss also but basically the smaller like urea and bicar goes from the dialysis flow into the blood that is also by diffusion along the concentration gradient its concentration higher in the dialysis flow so that go, goes into the blood so that is how the acidosis get corrected then your composition it can be non synthetic or synthetic nowadays we are using synthetic polysulfone polyether sulfone so less chances of uh, cell mediated or human mediated reactions now permeability depends on thickness and pore size now based on the beta to sur beta to microglobulin the surrogate by which the uh, dialyzer are classified so uh, it can be low flux high flux or protein leaking uh, high flux is uh, type 2 and 3 protein leaking is type 4 and 5 as per japanese classification so the efficacy depends on surface area larger pores that is high flux dialysis then then your membrane size membrane material membrane area priming volume they help us in selecting the dialyzer needed for the dialysis of the patient thank you